In a spine-chilling revelation from Jerusalem, a bone-chilling incident has left the world on edge, confirming the presence of the Antichrist. Jerusalem, a holy city with ancient secrets, is now entangled in a modern-day mystery. Today, let's dive into this video to explore the unsettling events that transpired, pointing to a sinister force at play. Let's uncover the truth together. What really happened in Jerusalem, and what does it mean for the world? Here we begin. The Bible compellingly portrays a future leader who will rise to unprecedented levels of power and authority, surpassing any previous figure in history. This individual will possess remarkable charisma, wielding a persuasive speech that captivates the hearts and minds of all who hear it. His influence will be so profound that people will come to believe he can solve all of the world's problems, marking him as a truly unique and unparalleled figure in human history. The source of this individual's extraordinary abilities lies in his direct connection to our spiritual adversary, Satan. In 2 Thessalonians 2, he is referred to as the Lawless One, whose arrival is intricately linked with Satan's workings. He will deceive many through impressive feats and miraculous signs, particularly those who reject the truth and salvation. This serves as a sobering warning about the consequences of refusing to embrace the truth. It becomes evident that the figure being described is none other than the Antichrist. The Bible hints at his embodiment of evil, portraying him as someone who actively opposes God's truth and leads people astray. This malevolent figure will go to extreme lengths, even daring to exalt himself above all else, including God. His audacious actions mirror the devil's desire to usurp God's authority. As depicted in Isaiah chapter 14, the Bible vividly describes the Antichrist's fall from grace, illustrating his arrogant declaration to ascend to the heavens and claim ultimate supremacy. Despite the uncertainty surrounding his arrival on earth, questions arise regarding whether he has already been born and awaits the fulfillment of biblical prophecies, or if he will emerge in the future, presenting himself as the savior of the world. These profound and unsettling questions raised by the Bible urge us to remain vigilant and discerning of the signs. The presence of the Antichrist among us, acting unnoticed, poses a crucial issue that demands our attention and awareness. As such, the urgency to discern and recognize these signs becomes paramount in understanding the implications of the Antichrist's influence on humanity. That the reign of the Antichrist. The Antichrist's strategy for global domination revolves around the implementation of what is known as the Mark of the Beast. This mark acts as a form of authorization, regulating all transactions within the world economy and determining who is permitted to buy, sell, and participate in everyday activities. Those who refuse to pledge allegiance to the Antichrist, represented by the beast from the sea, face severe repercussions. Furthermore, the Antichrist violates his covenant with Israel, desecrates the Jewish temple, and establishes a regime that promotes idolatry. Consequently, widespread persecution ensues manifesting not only through overt means but also through economic manipulation, resulting in deprivation and starvation for those who resist. In the prophetic narrative, the Antichrist embodies pure evil, empowered by Satan himself. Just as God has a trinity, Satan creates an unholy trinity to consolidate control over the world. A detailed examination of the Antichrist's origins, reign, and tactics unveils a bleak reality of persecution, economic exploitation, and spiritual desolation. By comprehending these prophecies, we gain insights into the potential challenges that may arise during the anticipated era of the Antichrist's reign. New Testament about Satan, let's explore the New Testament, delving into the account of Satan tempting Jesus three times during his period of fasting in the desert, just before the commencement of his earthly ministry. In the first instance, Satan sought to exploit Jesus' hunger by tempting him to turn stones into bread. Next, he transported Jesus to a high place, offering him dominion over all things if he would bow down before him. These temptations serve as vital lessons, revealing the adversary's deceptive strategies. Similarly, the Antichrist operates with subtlety, enticing individuals away from God's path. The parallels between Satan's temptations and the tactics of the Antichrist are striking. In each scenario, Satan presents seemingly beneficial offers to Jesus but demands worship and disobedience to God's word in return. This mirrors the insidious methods used by the devil in our lives today, 
enticing us with fleeting pleasures while diverting our focus from prayer and spiritual seeking. As we anticipate the revelation of the Antichrist, we must remain vigilant recognizing his intention to seduce the world with enticing promises while steering humanity away from God. The Bible, particularly in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, forewarns of a widespread apostasy in the last days, a mass turning away from faith, and that unwittingly empowers the forces of darkness, facilitating the Antichrist's rise to power. Further examination of biblical prophecy underscores the significance of events preceding Jesus Christ's return. Scholars interpret passages indicating the Antichrist's audacious claims, including his proclamation of divinity within the sacred sanctuary, a chilling scenario that aligns with the construction of the anticipated third temple in Jerusalem. As we decipher these prophecies, it becomes evident that the intricate warnings laid out in the Bible closely mirror the unfolding events of our present age. Let's now understand some events and prophecies getting fulfilled worldwide, proving the Antichrist's presence Reconstruction of the Third Temple, the aspiration to rebuild the Third Temple in Jerusalem holds profound significance within Judaism, particularly among Orthodox Jews who regard it as the holiest site for worship. Despite its destruction in antiquity, the idea of reconstructing the Temple has garnered momentum in the modern era, championed by groups like the Temple Movement since 1987. For Orthodox Jews, the endeavor to rebuild the Temple is not merely a religious obligation, but a spiritual imperative, believed to contribute to the betterment of the world. Central to this vision is the belief that the reconstruction of the Temple will restore divine order and pave the way for a harmonious existence. Gershon Salomon, a prominent figure leading the Temple Mount Faithful, has been instrumental in mobilizing support for the construction of the Third Temple. His efforts include organizing demonstrations at the Temple site, crafting ceremonial artifacts, and advocating for the realization of this sacred endeavor. The Sanhedrin, a religious council overseeing temple matters, plays a pivotal role in preparing for the restoration of temple services. Initiatives such as planting a specialized forest with botanical offerings required for temple rituals underscore their commitment to this cause. Speaking on behalf of the Sanhedrin, Rabbi Hillel Weiss emphasizes the profound spiritual connection between the temple, the land, and the divine. Contrary to popular misconceptions, temple sacrifices encompass not only animal offerings, but also plant-based rituals deeply rooted in Israel's agricultural landscape. Appearance of Archangel Michael Michael, an archangel, holds a unique role as a messenger of God and a powerful protector of God's people, particularly Israel. Recently, there have been reports of a celestial vision spotted above Israeli armored vehicles sparking speculation about Michael's presence and symbolizing God's protection over Israel amidst modern conflicts. This celestial event occurred during a significant moment resembling a swarm of angels. Israeli troops, energized by the occurrence, stood firm while their Arab adversaries felt fear and awe. Many analysts and believers interpreted this phenomenon as a divine shield. Seeing it as a sign of divine intervention safeguarding Israel during a critical juncture. The book of Daniel in the Bible first mentions the Holy Archangel. In Daniel's vision, the Archangel Gabriel, identified as a heavenly being clothed in linen, discloses spiritual resistance faced while influencing the Persian King Cyrus to permit the Jewish people's return to Israel. Gabriel attributes this resistance to the Prince of the Kingdom of Persia, highlighting unseen spiritual battles. In the context of these spiritual struggles, Michael enters the scene. Described as one of the chief princes, Michael's role involves providing assistance and reinforcement in spiritual battles. His appearance signifies divine intervention and protection, ensuring that God's plans ultimately prevail despite spiritual opposition. The book of Daniel further illustrates Michael's significance, portraying him as a key figure in spiritual conflicts. Gabriel encounters resistance from the prince of the kingdom of Persia, and Michael steps in to assist emphasizing the spiritual battles occurring behind the scenes. Later, in Daniel 1-1, Michael appears in a prophetic vision of the world's end, depicted as the protector of the people of Israel, saving them from their enemies. While Michael's name isn't explicitly mentioned again in the Old Testament, his presence is mentioned in the letter of St. Jude, linking him to a dispute over Moses' body. 
One of the most vivid depictions of Archangel Michael is found in the Book of Revelation, where he leads a heavenly army in a fierce battle against a great dragon. This epic confrontation, detailed in Revelation 12, 7, 9, portrays Michael as a powerful warrior who cast down Satan from heaven, triumphing over evil once and for all. Various passages in scripture make it clear that Michael was sent to earth as both a protector and a warrior. He possesses the power to defeat Satan and assist in safeguarding humanity from our spiritual enemies. However, Michael's mission extends beyond mere battle. Michael's mission encompasses being present and protecting all of God's people, especially the people of Israel. He is known as the protector of the people of God, a title earned through his victory over Lucifer during the heavenly conflict. Since then, he has been recognized as the captain of God's armies, embodying divine strength and courage. Michael stands as the defender of every faithful soul in their struggle against the forces of evil. In the Holy Scripture, Michael is depicted as the special guardian of the children of Israel, comforting and protecting them during times of sorrow or conflict. He played a crucial role in their return from Persian captivity, as seen in Daniel's prayer, and led the valiant Maccabees to victory in battle after Judas Maccabeus' prayer. Since its inception by Jesus Christ, the church's revered saint, Michael as its special patron and protector. His name is invoked during the confession of faults, and he is called upon to stand by the faithful in their hour of death. The church also chooses Michael as the escort for souls journeying from purgatory to the realms of holy light. According to prophecy, when the Antichrist establishes his kingdom on earth, Archangel Michael will unfurl the standard of the cross. This prophecy is derived from clear scripture indicating that in those days the great Prince Michael would rise up to protect the children of God. In the sixth century, during a plague in Rome, Pope Gregory the Great had a vision of Saint Michael sheathing his flaming sword indicating that Michael would put an end to the devastating scourge. In gratitude for his assistance, a church was built in 608, dedicated to St. Michael, implementation of digital currency. In today's world, there is a growing concern about the preparations for the arrival of the Antichrist, as foretold in the Book of Revelation. This dark prophecy, found in Revelation 13, speaks of a time when all, regardless of status, would be compelled to bear a mark on their right hand or forehead to engage in buying or selling. This unsettling revelation implies a sinister force making preparations for a future global ruler. The rise of central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, is a notable development that aligns with the ominous prophecies of Revelation. As Revelation 13 warns, he causes all to receive a mark. CBDCs, introduced by various nations, serve as a means to monitor and control citizens' financial activities. As one expert states, it's introduced to have complete control over the people living in a specific nation. This mirrors the control the Antichrist is expected to exert over the world's population. Nigeria's recent launch of its digital currency, the Anera, is a clear example of how CBDCs are becoming an integral part of the global financial landscape. President Mohamed Buhari believes the Anera will bring opportunities for the country's economy and citizens. However, this new currency comes with changes echoing the Book of Revelation. People are urged to transition from old Nera notes to digital currency, which commercial banks actively encourage. This shift raises concerns among citizens, particularly business owners, who face limitations in their financial transactions. As one citizen expressed, N3000 cannot go a very long way for a business owner. This move towards a cashless society, as observed in Nigeria, aligns with the idea of controlling transactions, reminiscent of the Antichrist's rule. The Nigerian government's implementation of digital currency, as seen in the Anaira, has stirred resistance among the Nigerian people. To facilitate the acceptance of this new currency, the government resorted to a drastic measure restricting the amount of cash individuals could withdraw daily. This move led to bank runs and left the citizens in a precarious financial situation, forcing them to embrace digital currency out of sheer necessity. This tactic demonstrates the government's determination to transition the population into a cashless society and highlights the potential for resistance and challenges in adopting digital currencies. Similar developments occur in Western countries, including the United States, indicating a global trend 
towards digital currencies and raising concerns about increased surveillance and control, echoing the prophetic warnings of Revelation. The Federal Reserve is gearing up to introduce FedNow, a new payment system tailored for banking institutions. These banks will then extend Fed capabilities to their clientele, which will include individual consumers and small businesses as well as large enterprises and even governmental entities. China is also making strides in the realm of digital currencies, albeit with a more proactive and regulatory approach. Beijing's recent decision to clamp down on banks and payment companies offering Bitcoin-related services caused a ripple effect in the cryptocurrency market. While surprising to many, this move is part of China's broader strategy to tightly regulate the use of digital currencies. Historically cautious of cryptocurrencies, the Chinese government views them as a potential threat to financial stability. To mitigate risks, they've opted for stringent control measures to avert any potential financial turmoil. Governments and influential figures worldwide have been closely monitoring the rise of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. As these digital assets gain traction, there's been a surge of interest from governmental bodies, tax authorities, regulators, and global elites in exploring their potential applications. Rather than attempting to dismantle cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Governments and agencies have come to terms with the challenge of eradicating them. Consequently, they're increasingly inclined to embrace and integrate digital financial systems into their existing frameworks. This strategic shift aligns with the adage, if you can't beat them, join them. Governments are keen on ensuring that no financial system remains beyond their purview, especially one as influential as digital currencies. This transition holds profound implications and echoes the prophecy outlined in Revelation 1 3, 17, envisioning a time when economic transactions hinge on the mark of the beast, symbolizing pervasive control over financial exchanges. Persecution of Christianity Satan's preparation for the arrival of the Antichrist manifests in various ways, with one notable aspect being the persecution of Christianity. According to biblical prophecies, the Antichrist will wage a relentless battle against Christians, involving widespread persecution and even executions. This anticipated persecution of Christianity is foreseen to become a global phenomenon, echoing the current reality of widespread persecution against Christians worldwide. Christianity stands as one of the most persecuted religions, serving as a troubling indication of the world's readiness for the Antichrist's reign. Revelation 24 contains a prophecy depicting those martyred for their faith, refusing to worship the beast or receive its mark. They are promised resurrection and a reign with Christ for a thousand years. This aligns with Jesus' words in Matthew 2, 4, 9, where he predicts the persecution and hatred Christians will face from all nations. The growing hostility towards Christians in contemporary society suggests the fulfillment of these prophecies. Additionally, 4 portrays the Antichrist opposing and exalting himself against all other objects of worship even proclaiming himself to be God. This self-exaltation is a fundamental aspect of the Antichrist's character, controlling the world through deception. The current global landscape and the acceptance of certain ideologies indicate a gradual build-up toward the eventual rise of the Antichrist. Another sign of Satan's preparation for the Antichrist lies in the fulfillment of biblical prophecies related to Jerusalem. The Bible indicates that armies will surround Jerusalem, signaling the approach of the end times. While these events have not reached their climax, mounting geopolitical tensions around Jerusalem align with these prophecies, suggesting that the world is moving closer to fulfilling apocalyptic events. In Luke 2.1.20, Jesus foretells that when armies surround Jerusalem, its desolation is near. This sign of desolation is echoed in Daniel 1.40 which describes a conflict at the end of times in which nations, symbolized as the king of the south and the king of the north, descend upon Jerusalem with formidable force. This prophecy is closely associated with the Battle of Armageddon, a pivotal event in the end times. Contemporary geopolitics strikingly parallel these biblical prophecies, with Israel and Jerusalem being focal points of regional and international tensions. The presence of armies, conflicts and nations vying for control over this region aligns with the prophetic vision of Jerusalem's encirclement, signifying that the world is progressing toward fulfilling these ancient prophecies. The emergence of a one-world order and religion, one-world government and religion, 
another facet of Satan's preparation for the Antichrist involves the advancement of a one-world order and a unified global religion. This initiative is gaining momentum and is pivotal in paving the way for the Antichrist's dominion. Influential figures like Klaus Schwab, chairman of the World Economic Forum, actively advocate for a one-world government, highlighting its potential advantages. The concept of unified global governance and religion aligns with the prophecy in Revelation 13, which predicts a time when no one can buy or sell without having the mark. This notion symbolizes worldwide control over economic structures and political authority, as prominent individuals and world leaders promote the idea of a singular global authority, it becomes apparent that a gradual process is unfolding to ready the world for the Antichrist. The correlation with biblical prophecies underscores the significance of these developments in the context of the end times. Despite the disquieting signs of preparation for the Antichrist, believers are urged to maintain faith in God's ultimate power and sovereignty. It's crucial to remember that no earthly authority, regardless of its magnitude, can surpass God's dominion. Those who endure the trials and tribulations of the end times with steadfast faith are promised eternal joy and the glory of heaven. So what do you think of these incidents in Jerusalem confirming the presence of the Antichrist? Comment below and subscribe for more.